This video is sponsored by Surfshark, but more about them later in the video. Wow, everything is going great. Oh no, I ran into an error. Not a problem, I'll just watch this tutorial. There we go, all better. Oh god, another error. Time to look up another tutorial. There we go, all better. Oh dear god, not again, I give up. Ah yes, how to learn JavaScript. Here we go. Finally I found the perfect tutorial. Wait maybe this one is better? Okay this one will do the trick. Wait but this one has a stick figure named Bob. I like Bob. Okay just a few more tutorials. Maybe if I play them all at once I can absorb all the knowledge. This is the beginner's JavaScript course. You what is JavaScript? For. What can you do with it? Where does JavaScript code run? JavaScript full seven hour course. This course has everything that you. I have completed my online course. And now it's time for a well deserved break. Shadow clone jutsu. Okay, back to coding. And just like that, I've immediately forgotten everything. So, I assume you've experienced at least one of these scenarios, uh, which is why you're watching this video. Me, myself, I have experienced all of these scenarios many, many times. So in this video, I'm going to share with you guys my tips on how to learn to code faster and not give up. Also, do stick until the very end of this video. I'm going to share with you guys a supercharged method of learning new languages really, really quickly after you've covered the basics. All right. Let's go. Tip number one is to stop doing those things above and instead focus on project based learning, which is doing your own projects. I recommend following this framework, which is what I call a breath first approach centered around project based learning, which is basically a fancy way of saying that you should learn a minimum about a subject and then do a project on it. And then you learn more about it and then you do another project on it and then you learn more about it and then you do another project on it. So you're learning more and more, expanding your skill set and doing increasingly more complex projects. This is opposed to a depth first approach, which is when you try to learn everything about a subject and then you start working on, on your project. The reason why I recommend this breadth first approach centered around project based learning is for three major reasons. The first one is that it keeps your motivation much higher because you can see the results of what it is you're doing. For example, if you're learning web development, which me myself, I'm still a noob in, what's much more exciting than reading about theoretical things is actually getting something to work and something showing up on your web page. And you're kind of like, wow, something showed up. Now I wonder how I can make a button. Second reason is that it helps you focus on what is actually important to learn as opposed to a lot of the extraneous things. Because as a beginner, you don't actually know what is important and what is not important. Sometimes if you're just watching tutorials, for example, web development, they show you some weird JavaScript trick and you're like, wow, like this JavaScript trick, I must remember it, super important. But then in reality, you realize later on that it actually is like a very specific niche trick that is really not applicable to, to pretty much everything else. So by actually doing your own project, you start to get a better sense of what is actually important to know and what is not super important to know. And that saves you a lot of time. Third reason is plug for project based learning and project based learning is just studies have shown over and over again. It's the best form of learning because it allows you to encode information in multiple different ways. By working on a project, you're much more likely to remember what it is that you learn as opposed to like more passively consuming information by reading books we're watching other people do it. So what I recommend is that just go out there, choose a course or choose a tutorial. There's actually so many free tutorials out there um, that are actually really good. And just make sure that it explains the concepts really quickly. And then after you learn the basics, start doing your own project. Now, since after this video, you're going to know how to learn to code much, much faster. That means you have more time to watch anime. So let's take a moment to talk about Surfshark, who is today's sponsor. A VPN comes in super handy when you want to watch a specific anime and is not available in your country. Like for example, if you're in the US and you really want to watch Code Geass, I'm probably pronouncing it wrong. And you like Code Geass? Code Geass? Code Geass. 
Basically, if you really, really want, want to watch that, you can't because you're in the US. However, if you change your location using a VPN, then you are suddenly able to watch it. VPNs are also super handy if you're just out and about and then doing things in public spaces um, because you don't want people to steal your data because you never know these days. You can get Surfshark VPN by going to the link over here, also linked in descriptions. By going to this link, you can get 83% off and three months for free. Say you're learning Python because you want to um, start doing data science, or you might want to do game development, for example. If you're doing it for data science, what you should learn is just the basics of Python, which is variable declaration, if statements, loops, things like that, and like data types. And then you should learn three modules, which is NumPy, Pandas, as well as some sort of visualization module like Seaborn or something. Um, and that should give you the basics so that you can start working on your own project. And for game, you should learn the same, the basics of Python, especially focus on object oriented programming which is more important and then choose an ui like t kinter i can never pronounce it but like t kinter uh, ui to start building out your own game while you're working on your project you will 100 percent run into issues like cryptic errors or just things that don't work and then what you do is like you, you google or you stack overflow which is like um, the platform that software engineers data scientists people who code ask questions and it like saves lives so you google it you, you stack overflow it, where you watch some tutorials to try to fix your specific problem and then you just continue working on that project Trust me, using this breadth first approach and just doing your own projects along the way is so much better and you will learn so much faster. However, you may now be thinking, I don't know what to focus on for a project. You're like telling me to do a project, but I don't even know what project to do. So let's talk about tip number two on how to learn coding faster. I really encourage you to really look into why you want to learn coding in the first place. A mistake that I see a lot of people make is they're just like, wow, coding, that sounds really cool and stuff. Like that's probably good and maybe I can get a job or something. So the problem with not having a project or like an end goal to focus on is that you end up learning a lot of disjoint things, but you don't really learn anything properly. So after learning all of this, you still don't really know how to do anything like for example you might learn stuff about web development a little but you don't really know how to do web development where you're learning about like data science but you don't really know how to do data science and then you kind of just like spread yourself out like that and waste a lot of time and another thing is that if you don't have like this goal in mind you're gonna end up you know, when you run into an issue, which you definitely will run into an issue because coding is hard and you're like banging your head against the wall for three hours trying to like figure out this one error, you're much more likely to give up. So really think about why you're doing this. Even if your reason is to just ultimately get a job, then you should focus on algorithms and data structures if you're going for like a software engineering job because that's what they're going to ask you on your interviews. And in the beginning, it doesn't have to be like super specific. So it can just be general areas like web development or like game development, app development, data science. And that's good enough to focus you and get you started. And like if you really, really, really at this point have no idea what you want to do, um, you can also check out this video or like maybe it's here, this video that I'll link over here that has some project ideas and hopefully one of them will spark your interest. Third tip on how to learn to code faster is to focus. You're like, oh wow, this, this tutorial seems good where you're like, that tutorial seems good too and also that one. So you have like five different tutorials where you're like, oh, this stack for web development looks good and this one looks good too. And then you try to learn like all of them at the same time, something like that. Do not do that. There are a lot of paths to learn coding. And what's really important is that you just choose one path and you follow through with it. Let's take web development, for example. Say you choose a web dev stack, like the mean stack, for example. What you should do is that you should learn the basics of the stack and then how to implement the most vanilla version possible. And then, you know, you go and start working on your own project. What you shouldn't do is be like, oh wow, like Mern stack it seems like it's better because this article told me that the Mern stack is better. And then you start working on the Mern stack instead. After you learn that one framework properly, then you can go learn like the five other frameworks and languages and whatever later when you actually need them. You might be surprised to learn that you really don't need to learn a lot of these packages out there, which I discovered um, in my own web development journey. Just choose one path, follow through with it, focus on the things that are important and you'll learn to code much, much faster. Like a golden rule that you should always keep at heart is that it's always better to get something working first and then you can expand upon it. Fourth tip to learn to code faster is to not memorize things and take copious amounts of notes. The people who fall into this trap the most I find are people who come from subjects that are non-technical, um, especially people who are like in med school or something, you know, when they're really used to memorizing a lot of things and exactly like knowing how to do 
a lot of things. Coding, however, it's a very hands-on skill. So if you're going to take notes, it's really good to just kind of take a framework of notes. I won't go into too much detail here, but you can check out this video over here where I talk about the way that I take notes. It's all about having like a fundamental framework and certain concepts so that you can always easily look things up when you need them. And even super senior engineers and programmers, they're constantly still looking stuff up. As you get better at coding, you're really getting better at Googling and problem solving and knowing what's important and not important. Or as a senior software engineer, that I work with says, you get better at knowing which code to steal. So save yourself that time. Don't go and take copious amounts of notes. Use that time to do projects and really practice your skill set, and you will learn so much faster. Fifth tip on how to learn coding faster is to play around with your code and be very curious and exploratory. What I mean by this is that you should try to understand things. So instead of following tutorial exactly, like doing exactly what that person is doing, you can try to play around a little bit. If a tutorial is telling you you like oh you're trying to concatenate a string and like an integer and then you have to change the integer into a string you should be like but what if I don't? And then you not do it and then you'd be like, oh shit, I get an error. Okay, that's why. Um, and that gives you a deeper understanding that you can only concatenate things of the same data type. By playing with your code, you start understanding um, how things work a lot better. You become much better at intuitively problem solving, which is like the most important skill of a coder because you're constantly trying out different things, running into issues and then problem solving. By having a good understanding of how things work, you're gonna be able to learn how to code so much faster. Okay, now these supercharged method so that you can learn different languages super super fast is understanding how things work how programming languages work under the hood it's kind of like if you understand the true nature of chakra and natural energy you're then able to activate the sage mode and then you can do so many more things that you previously were just unable to do let me know in the comments if you understood that analogy did you know that most programming languages are actually built on top of each other so there's like this concept called lower level languages and higher level languages and it's like this spectrum. The lowest level language is called assembly and it has this one-to-one -one relationship with machine code, which is like the zeros and ones. In general, if you understand these lower level languages, it's really easy for you to understand and pick up these more higher level languages. It's because the concepts are all the same. It's just that the more higher up you go on the levels, things become more abstracted away and you don't have to like manually control as many things. So higher level languages are generally easier. For example, if you want to write a loop in assembly, it takes a lot of code. Um, and then if you write that in C, which is slightly higher level language, it takes less code. And then you move on to Java, which is even more higher level, it takes less code. And then you move on to Python, in which you, you can honestly do a one-liner with list comprehension. You may be wondering though, so why don't I just learn the lower level languages and then work my way up? You could, but the reason why I don't recommend this is just that it's really, really painful. And you're a lot more likely to give up because it's so painful. And of course, if you give up, then not only do you not learn it faster, you end up like not learning it at all, right? So my general recommended approach is that you should learn a higher level language first, like Python or JavaScript or Java. And after you feel pretty comfortable with that, then you should really look into the more lower level languages, um, like C, for example. This will really help you understand how data structures work, how object-oriented programming works, and how memory allocation works. I don't think you need to go all the way down to assembly, um, but I think C is like a pretty good lower level language to learn. And then after you learn the lower level language, say you started off with Python, then picking up Java or picking up JavaScript is, is like super easy. Um, I actually did a video over here where I picked up JavaScript in just like a few hours. And that's because I put in the pain and the sweat and the tears into learning assembly code as well as C. So there you go. My tips on how to learn coding faster. Uh, let me know in the comments if you've made any of these mistakes. And also if you have any additional tips for how to learn to code faster. By the way, don't forget, if you want to check out Surfshark, um, you can go to this link over here, also linked in descriptions to get 83% off and also three extra months free. I will see you guys in the next video or live stream.